Hello, and welcome back to Chewing the Cud. We are back, solid, solid as a rock, to bring you a roundup of showbiz news, a fun look at things on the internet, and a life lesson. And now it's time to say hello to the man who knows a cock or two, a parrot and a budgie. It's Mike. I do know a cock or two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know you do. Are you saying that that's something rude? You, you, I, know, I know your love of birds. Uh, yes, I do. I've been swaggering around the internet to bring you some of the high, low and mid points, including the story about a new moving company. And I have some hot showbiz news, including a story about our favourite US celebrity and some wildlife. Mm -hmm. mm. You can keep in touch with us on all the usual social media sites. Just search for The Cud TV. Our website is thecud.tv. And if you want to listen to us as a podcast, have a search for Chewing The Cud on your favourite podcast app. And if you've interacted with us on social media, then have a quick peek. You may see your name flying across the screen right now. It's that time again, Lee. Bring it on the dancing boys. No, that's after the show, remember? Right now it's time for... Game of the Week. I can taste purple. The producer can't be with us today, as he's auditioning for a part in the new stage version of the Teletubbies. He said he can't wait to show us his tinky winky in front of a packed auditorium full of children. Uh -oh. <laughs> Let's play a game of first drafts, where the films would have been very different if just one letter of their title was changed. Let's pop the first one up. So Gene Kelly stars in this musical about a campanologist who manages to continue his hobby despite bad weather. Bell ringer. Campanologist. That's what it means. Bell ringer. Okay. See, with this game, I start off slow. <laughs> yeah, it was the like the blank look when I said campanologist. You say I was thinking tense. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I said bell ringer. Oh, ringing in the rain. Ring Sorry, I'm just going to burst in there. Just to say it, <laughs> you do that anyway. I know, yeah. Bring him in the rain. I get, I, yeah, I get quite aggressive, don't I? Yeah. Rage. <laughs> Let's see if I'm right. No, you're not. <laughs> I am you right. You are indeed. Ringing in. in the rain. So I wouldn't know what campanologist Yeah, is. so really I helped you with that one. I would have said like tenting in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> tenting in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> What's oh, that rain turns me on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Let's have another one. A man manages to save hundreds of kids from the Nazi death camps despite losing his compass and map. Schindler's lost. Oh, see, I'm always very wary of making fun of those type of films. Why? It's very serious. Oh, serious. It's a very serious film, but you can still make fun of it. Okay, so, let, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Schlin, Schlin. <laughs> Schlin, 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 Schlin. Schindler's lost. So should we see if I'm right with that one? Yeah, let's see. I think you might be right. You got yeah. it right. Schindler's lost. Maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, you, you can make fun of things. Right, and you, you can make jokes about stuff as long as you're very aware that the sensitive nature of the matter. Mm. Yeah. The next one. In turn of the century London, Mr Lineker plays a nanny who employs music and adventure to help two neglected children become closer to their father. Got it, Gary Poppins. Gary Poppins. <laughs> Gary Poppins. Gary Poppins. Gary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Poppins. <laughs> Gary Poppins. <laughs> That's knows where my mind is. <laughs> Gary Poppins. Gary Poppins. <laughs> oh, spoonful of sugar. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get the answer up quick? Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, I got it right. It though. is Gary Poppins. Gary Poppins. <laughs> Not Gary Poppins. Gary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Has it been one of them days for you? Oh, no, it's, you know, it's barely 2021, and I've lost the will. Mm -hmm. Can see. Just from the outfit. Oh. We'll get another one. Yeah. Do you insist? An angel is sent from heaven to help a desperately frustrated businessman by showing him what life would have been like if he had become a citrus salesman. 
<laughs> no. It's a fruity life. <laughs> it's a fruit. No, it's just one letter that changes. Oh, it's just one letter. Every time we play no. this game, you do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Lockwork orange? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Clockwork orange? No, lockwork orange, because you have to lose a letter. I, don't, I think it's more modern a film than we think. Okay. <sighs> no. Don't, we don't know. Come I've, got, I've got cockwork orange in my head now, so... Cockwork orange? Is it cockwork orange? It's a, a wonderful, wonderful lime! I was uh. there! You were. I was Apart there. You thought it was more modern than you than well, thought. <laughs> <laughs> it, they speak in it, which is not what I'm used to watching. You're used to <laughs> someone at the piano going... Yeah. Should we pull one up now? Yes. The story of a forbidden and secretive relationship between two cowboys and their lives over the years as they build a water feature in their garden. Brokeback Fountain. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> You're building suspense and normally you don't. I was so. trying to, in my head, oh, right, see, in my head, all I can see of the film was okay. him spitting in his hand and going, this'll be fine. That In the tent bit, and I'm going, right, okay, okay, then what's the name? What's the name of the film? What's the name of the film? fixated on that bit. Yeah. Like every Daily Mail reader, you fixated on that little bit of the movie. Yeah, it was sexy. It was. It was Heath Ledger, too. Whew. Rest in peace. Do you like him? I, uh, yeah, I had a big thing for Heath Ledger. Do you like his dead corpse? No. Thank you. No. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brother Fountain. Yeah. Brother Fountain. yeah. Okay, let's pop it. Let's pop one out. Let's pop one out. Okay. Michael, Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, plays 007 caught in an assassination plot with a Soviet spy as he tries to retrieve an encryption device. There was a lot of words in that. There were a lot of words in that. <laughs> it's a James Bond film, isn't it? Well, we know I don't do James Bond. I don't do James Bond either. In our, in our area, we're getting a whisper of, it's a film that should never have been made. No, we've got no... We don't know. We don't know. Let's see what it... What was it? I know, I know that the world is not enough because that was a garbage song. Okay. But that's, that's, that's it. No, I think we give up. Stinky finger? Stinky finger. <laughs> That's a different type of movie. <laughs> oh, oh, from Russia we go. Going, they're going too highbrow with us now, aren't they? Uh, well, yeah, if it requires a level of unpicking it, yeah, we're not uh, going to do it. No. No. Especially 007 stuff. Mm. Okay, should we, should we pull one up, see if it's a bit lower in brow? Using ancient DNA, scientists managed to clone a number of prehistoric dogs which break free and run amok. Jurassic Park! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Jurassic Park! <laughs> I, I think it's that. I, I think it might be that as well, yes. <laughs> this is the level that you need to set all questions at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just low enough for me to get aggressive at. Yeah! <laughs> and scream. Uh, Jurassic, Jurassic Park! <laughs> Park! Let's see if I'm right. Yes. Yes. Shall we see? Shall we? Shall we have a little points check? Or should we just do one more? Shall we just do one more and then just do one more and see what happens? Yeah. Yeah. All right. A toon-hating detective is a cartoon animal's only hope when he is accused of stealing Jessica's phone and posting rude pictures on her Facebook page. That is brilliant. <laughs> I'm going to say who blamed Roger Rabbit. Okay. But that just isn't really no, no different from who framed Roger Rabbit. Who photoed Roger? No. Um, I was going to say who framed Roger Rabbit. <gasps> it could be. It could be. It's too many letters. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So it's not that. Um... <laughs> um. No, no idea. Know. No idea. You were, were right. Oh, I was right. 
You're right, you got it. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Amy. Oh, shall we see who's the winner and shall, who's shall the loser? Shall we have a look who's a big dirty loser? It was three all round, so we're both oh, dirty losers. Oh, a tide. Yes, a tide. Oh, don't so worry. <laughs> don't worry. It's not long until we bring you another special life lesson. But before that, we have Lee with the showbiz news. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we speak to the man who doesn't know what pegging is, it's Lee in the showbiz news. I don't know what it is. It's not when you're putting clothing out. I it, thought it was when you put the, the pegs on your nips. It's when a, a lady puts on a prosthetic, you know, what's it? And, a leg? And, no, a, a peony. Okay. And then is the top. I'm going to pour bleach in my ears because I don't want to know this. I don't want to hear the stuff that's coming out. Of my <laughs> the, uh, the gallery? Yeah. They're, they're just saying a strap a dick to me. <laughs> what do we need in 2021, Mike? Um, casual sex and ice cream. Failing that, would the return of stars in their eyes pique your interest? No, I want casual sex and ice cream. <laughs> you're not going to get it. Okay. But you're going to get the return of Stars in Their Eyes. I'll, I'll, I'll take that as a close second. Were you, were you a fan of Stars in Their Eyes? I, I was a, a fan of Stars in Their Eyes. It was officially craptastic television, wasn't it? Was it was awful. It was dreadful television, but it was also amazing. So it ran from 1990 mm -hmm. to 2006. So originally it was hosted, you probably won't remember when it was hosted by Leslie Crowther. Who's Leslie Crowther? He's dead. Well, okay, but that doesn't tell me who he is. <laughs> he was <laughs> the a lot of dead people. <laughs> <laughs> he was the original presenter of Stars in the Rise. What he was quite he cheesy, kind of like showbizy presenter type guy. What else did he do? I don't know. Okay. Just that, and then he died. Um, and then <laughs> Matthew Kelly took over. Oh, okay. For the, for the for the duration, and then I I vaguely remember this, but Cat Dealey also had a go at it. She did because she did for a um, while. Thingy Bobby couldn't do it anymore, could he? Thingy Bobby couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. Oh well, we've got a picture here of Thingy Bobby, um, who couldn't do it anymore. Matthew, yeah. um, uh, Kelly, mm -hmm. um, um, who was the longest serving presenter. Um, so originally it was um, basically what happened is members of the public came on. Mm -hmm. Awkward chat um, about who they were. Hello, my name is Brian from Scunthorpe. And they'd go, blah, blah, blah. And then he'd go, so, Brian, who are you going to be tonight? Please tell us. And he'd go, well, tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Engelbert Humperdinck. And he would go through the screen, the, the did, shutty doors. Did they not do a thing before that about saying, like, who the person was to try and make you Oh, guess? yeah. They ca yeah. 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 And they did, like a, like, a home video thing where they were, like, you know, whatever. And then all the they would go through the smoky doors mm -hmm. and come back out looking nothing like who it was they were supposed <laughs> to be and sounding nothing like they were supposed to be. Yeah. It was amazing. They also did celebrity specials as well. There was... Um, him from Pulp, Jarvis Cocker. Uh -huh. He went and came out as... Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't come um, back as Michael Jackson. Because he did like him. Um, he came back as, as the one... The, well, he was the Australian. They went... Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh. Rolf Harris. Yeah, he did Rolf Harris. Yeah, that was before the trouble. The troubles. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Rolf's troubles, you know. Um, <laughs> so, and then in 2015, he came back with Harry Hill. Uh -huh. And you see that I didn't like the Harry Hill version because mm. he knew it was a, a joke and it just didn't work. It works best when they think it's serious. Yes, but it is it is coming back for twenty twenty one. Excitement! It's going to be called. It's a new name. It's called Starstruck. So the American name for it. Yeah, but I kind of like the imagine that if it, if they don't get the votes, mm -hmm. a huge pendulum comes out of the, <laughs> the ceiling <laughs> and takes them out. Woof! Like woof, and they're gone. So it's, it's going to be called Starstruck, and they're going to have like a celebrity judging panel okay. where they're going to get so the, the people that become the celebrities are judged. Now, the first person to be signed up is Sheridan Smith. She can sing. She can sing. And she did Scylla. Yeah. So, you know, that's good. 
they're not announced who else it is, but yeah. it's, it, it, we need a bit of Stars in the Rise. We need it to be awful. We do, but the thing is, if it's got people like Sheridan Smith on it who can sing, I think it's going to be more serious -y. Oh, it can't be though. Do you Because <laughs> they didn't have they didn't have judges in the original Stars and Rise. Did no, they, they didn't. But it was they just can... people coming on and, and the public would vote for yeah. who 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 they liked. Um there was because it's gone all over the, the Stars in the Rise, the formats all mm -hmm. over the world. The most infamous one, I think it's a Swedish one, mm. where a white woman becomes Stevie Wonder. Okay. You must YouTube that. It's it's unbelievable. They won't do that this time. No. So, yeah, Stars in the Rise. Did she, um... Yeah. Oh, dear. Full. And l acted like she couldn't see. If you were going to be on Stars in the Rise, who would you be? I don't know. You don't know? Clearly, I would be Kylie Minogue. I think if I was on Stars in, in Your Eyes, I would be bewitched. Oh, all of them. All of them? All of them. Would you have, like, a broom prop through your shoulders with balloons on for the other... No, I'd, the make, other... Them, I'd make them record me many times. Oh, OK. <laughs> I'd have to do it four or five times. Right. <laughs> Technology. Yeah. OK. So, speaking of celebrities, the NHS wants some celebrities. OK. They want some sensible celebrities to help us, convince us to have the coronavirus vaccine. So... They don't want silly. They don't want silly celebrities. Why not? Because you know that's not serious enough. They want serious ones. So they're, they're gonna. They want celebrities and influencers. So, <laughs> so all they really need is Attenborough. Well, you know. So apparently they're drawing up a list of very sensible, famous faces. So Attenborough, if he's still with us. I think he's still with us. Yeah, barely, but he is. Yeah. Um, who else? else would be sensible? Sandy Toxpick? Sandy Toxpick. Yeah, she's quite nice, isn't she? Dawn French. Dawn French. <laughs> you see how we get you sillier? Yeah, but they're nice people and you kind of believe what they well, say. They want sensible people. Yeah. We've got a picture here of three celebrities that could possibly be considered for the role. So we've got Gemma Collins. So she, you know, just have that prick. A lot of pricks I do have had loads. Jedward, as we know, quite popular on the social media. Yeah. Is that some chest hair I can see on Jedward? They're finally growing up. Oh. Oh, bless. Perturbed by that. They they could, you know, bounce around and say, have your injections. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then Alison Hammond. I love Alison Hammond. Oh. Oh, do you not like the no. Hammond? Why? She's a bit meh. Oh, she's funny. I have thought of some celebrities. Okay. Okay, so the first person that I have thought, or duo that I have thought would be really good. Mm. Are these people the crankies? And I'm a doozy. <laughs> Have your injections. Where are they from suddenly? Scotland. Is that a Scottish accent? Yeah, she's the. Uh, and I'm a doozy. That's how she, that's exactly how she sounds. Okay, Bodger and Badger. <laughs> Bodger and Badger, yes. Bodger and Badger. Da, 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 da. But, no, it's Bodger and Badger. The next slide. <laughs> Is that it? Is that yes. just it? Bodger, Bodger and Badger. Bodger and Badger. Looks like he's had it on his face anyway. Splattered on uh, on, on his face. Oh, it's smashed. Could be, could be the virus. It could be a bowl of virus. Uh, it could be a bowl bowl of um. Camels. <laughs> <laughs> It could be a bowl of vaccine. It could be. But he splats on his face. Okay. Yeah. Something else. And then final final ones who I think the cheeky girls. Cheeky girls. Yes, that's that We are the cheeky girls. Touch in my bum. There. They could re-release the song. Because that was their song, wasn't it? Touch my bum. Not Touch in my, my bum. But if they if you're having your injection in your bum. You're not having it in your arm like everybody else. Yeah, but who knows? <laughs> we don't know yet where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I need to have a conversation with your doctor if that's what they're doing. This last story is the best story ever. Okay. So, Cher. <laughs> okay. She's not just been sitting around eating sausage rolls like we have during lockdown. Oh, I've not just been eating sausage rolls. What else have All you been the eating? pastries. All of them. All the pastries. She has been to Pakistan. Okay. And she's been to Pakistan to, to help a lonely elephant. Oh. This is like proper... Squish, squish, boo hoo. So, okay. Sorry. I shall so, myself. So there is an elephant called Carvan. Mm -hmm. We've got a picture. This, well, this is a picture of Cher, who is um, 
where he lived in the zoo. Okay. He's massive. I'm a little bit concerned. If you see, there's a tiny little hole, like like a dog flap. It's either a really small elephant, mm -hmm. or it's like a dog pretending to be an elephant. I am an elephant, yes. And this is how I get into my or home. May maybe it's there so they can put food through for the elephant. I did not think that <laughs> through. <laughs> Like we've got this massive box for you. Oh, that'll be lovely. Get through that hole. <laughs> but I'm so big. Get in the hole. Or you're not, you're not being saved. Oh, well, we've got a picture of actual Kevin here. Who just, oh, oh. he's sad. And you know what? He's been stuck in this zoo. So he was gifted to Pakistan by Sri Lanka in the mid-1980s. Mm. And he spent decades in this zoo in a really, really tiny enclosure with... It was dead rubbish. He did have a girlfriend, but then she died. Oh. So Cher has been involved in raising money to have him taken to a different country. So he's going to um, a wildlife sanctuary where he's got loads more space, loads more room. He can, like, do natural things. We've got a picture of that. He can do natural things. <laughs> what is na what natural things? on the savannah. <laughs> <laughs> he can watch Netflix, he can do anything he wants to. <laughs> he can have a look. <laughs> That'll be people watching. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a picture here of Cher at the zoo. I think she's singing to him. I think that's superimposed. I don't think it. Because <laughs> she genuinely there. was there. I think she's going, if I could turn back to home. And he's going, oh, no, Cher, but you can't. But just get me to a nice sanctuary. I'm an elephant, get me out of here. Yeah. I, for one, think that that is amazing. Well done, Cher. Yes, but well done, Cher, for saving a single elephant. Don't yeah. again. The end of Shelby's news. <laughs> OK. Well, thank you for that, Lee. Always good to know that things are returning and being saved. Coming up soon, we have our life lesson. But before that, we have Mike in the buzz. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now it's time to go over to the man who some say is the love child of Mini-Me and an egg. It's Mike in the buzz. Hmm, really? Freaking laser beam. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually a good accent. <laughs> it was! How it's like, happen? how many, it's like 285 million episodes <laughs> and I've finally done an impression that actually works. Yeah. Thank well you. done you, well done you, yes. Thank you. Um, it won't happen ever again, don't worry <laughs> <do> you. <laughs> I've been having a rummage around the internet. I managed to find a couple of little things to show you. Oh, please mm -hmm. show them. Some big things too. Ooh. And the first one is, when you were learning to read and write at school, mm -hmm. did you get like Annie Apple and a book with like lots of different things? I'm just looking at me funny. So A is for Apple. Oh, I thought you said, did you get any apples? No. I was like, no. <laughs> just... Like, learn to spell or you'll starve. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a raisin. Um, I, I, I vaguely remember the, the animals. The, the animals? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a kind of so I don't remember. Yeah. Wow. OK. Um, well, a new book has come out. Has it? Um, which exposes the oddest spellings in English. Oh. While teaching children to read, which is an really? interesting way of doing it. And the title of the book is P is for Pterodactyl. Which it is. It is. Mm. Um, but all the way through the book, it has lots of fun spellings, like and G is for no. Yes. And I've forgotten all the other ones. That's, that's about it, though, isn't it? No. Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, X is for xylophone. Yes. Yeah, why is Michelle Pfeiffer in there? Because it begins with a P. Oh, but Pfeiffer. But we say Pfeiffer. Oh, right, OK. Yes. Lost way Teaching right. the kids what they need to know. <laughs> Michelle begins with an M. I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that so, kind of stuff. So F is for so P is for Pfizer. Yes. Yes. That sort of thing. Back in the back in the hundreds of years ago, uh -huh. when I was trained to be a childcare professional, mm -hmm. I went to a um, school in the Lake District where they didn't bother teaching the children how to spell. They just allowed them to spell how they thought the words were spelled. Wow. 
Yeah, and they said we're not we're not worrying about we'll worry about you know proper spelling when they go to high school and they're not at their school anymore. <laughs> and they that yeah, so literally they did. They would just write how they thought things sounded. That'd be cool. So like cow was like k a o w cow. That works. It does. I like that. I'll get you the name of the school. I should have gone to that school. Yeah. My spelling's atrocious. Um, next story that I have is about a goldfish. Okay, little tiny goldfish. Oh. Yeah. When, when you did chair rescue it? No. Well, I'm not interested. No, of then. course, chair didn't <laughs> rescue it because it wasn't impressive like an elephant. She'd have to get on a plane to go. Been in a pond for fifty years. <laughs> it's like, well, that's one thing you shouldn't do with goldfish. You shouldn't put them in a pond. Why? Because they grow. Oh. Yes. So this is a recent that uh, goldfish can grow to huge sizes, the size of cats. Oh. Right? If put out in open water, and they're horrible for the environment because they will just eat everything. Oh. So you're not impressed by that? I don't you? like the idea of that. A giant goldfish? No. What, you, what would you call a goldfish? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a story now oh dear. about my goldfish. So I used to have, <laughs> I used to have um, a fish tank, right? And I had a number of goldfish in, and over the years they died. So what the, in the end, I just had splish and splosh were left. Okay, and then okay. splish died, uh -huh. and there was only splosh left. So like every month, I used to have to clean this tank out, and it was a huge tank. Mm -hmm. um, and then so like one day, I so I used to put the goldfish in a bowl. Mm -hmm. Separate bowl to clean the tank out. And I just was just, I just went, no, I can't do this. I can't go through this again. So um, chucked it down the toilet and flushed it. While it was still alive? Yeah. It was very old. Probably didn't have long left. Definitely didn't have to have been flushed. <laughs> I, I like to think if he kind of met his, his destiny, that, that Amongst the turds. You do know that, you do, you do know that once the, the water leaves your bowl, it's in free air. So it's not all fluid all the way down. It doesn't swim down the tube. It falls. Into the water. Yeah. Have you ever belly flopped? Ever, That's my question. When you're in a swimming pool, you just want to jump in and splash. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that from the top of your house. I don't, I don't take, I, I'm not small. liking you judging. <laughs> I'm just, just pointing out that you killed a fish. I didn't kill a fish, it's that one that you showed on there then. That, that was in America. It got to America, it swam. It swam, <laughs> yeah. It's plummeted to his death. It was 30 years ago. <laughs> and it's like suppressors and here we have them. Here you thought you killed it. Here it is. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> well. <laughs> um, <laughs> We'll go on to the next story. Yeah, please. Before we get any phone calls. Um, when you're driving down the road... Yeah. Have you ever run over something? <laughs> Not a person. This isn't going well for me today. <laughs> Are we going to get to another story? Uh, well, well, it was, it was one time. family. <laughs> <laughs> Newborn oh. baby in a pram. No, um, <laughs> Not like you run, over, you run over a plastic bottle. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I have run, yes. Yeah, or, or... Road rubbish. Road rubbish. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. um, well, imagine the, the surprise that this gentleman had <sighs> when he was... He pulled over to find that he'd run over and got caught in his car a dildo. <gasps> That's your car, though, isn't it? No, it's not. Mine's red. So I imagine the surprise. Uh, we get smacked with a dildo and it came out of nowhere. <laughs> well, it came from somewhere. It didn't just... <laughs> it's not like bloody Doctor Who that wow, wow appears like a TARDIS. <laughs> That's the age-old excuse when you hit something, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, oh, it just came out of nowhere. <laughs> OK. Was he on a motorway or just a side? He was interstate. Oh, OK. Did he keep yes. it? Yeah. Well, it was lodged in his car. I think he did. <laughs> the wash should be fine. <laughs> no, it's literally wedged into his car. It was literally wedged into yeah, it? Yeah, if we bring a look at the photo again. If it does that to a car, imagine what that, that could do to your insides. If it's going at 70 miles an hour, probably quite a lot of damage. <laughs> but I'm not sure what, you do, what you're doing, but never the 70 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Strapping it to the booty car. <laughs> <laughs> Getting somebody in and go, reverse! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> so if you ever see Lee going backwards on the M52. Um... Trousers down. <laughs> You'll know. Okay, um, and if something slides into your DMs, and I don't mean those pics, why not share it with us? Just give us a tag using the Could TV on all of the usual social media platforms. We need our mailbox filling. And it's not had a good stuffing for ages, but that's been true for so many of us, especially Lee. But that brings us to the story of the week. Okay, and it's a story about a moving company. Okay. okay. So if you have a moving house, um, you could move it yourself or you can get a man in, yeah? Well, this group of, of gentlemen are called the College Hunks Removal Company. Okay. okay. And they're all gentlemen at college that have very good bodies, okay? They have, they have moved more than 100 domestic abuse victims for free oh. during the lockdowns in America. Okay. okay. That's Which very, is very worthy. Very, very reckless. And very well done them. And they're all attractive, which is the only reason I'm covering it, to be fair. Oh, right, okay. Yes. Um, so, so, so you've, like, booked them for, for moving your house, even though you're not moving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I want you to move from this bedroom to this bedroom. <laughs> What's been, what needs to be packing? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of space up there. <laughs> um. <laughs> there is. It's like a loft. <laughs> like a warehouse. Oh, well, they, I take it they're American. They are American. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't do it. I've lost my powers. Yes. <gasps> oh, no. Well, that's lovely. Do, they, do lovely. they keep the clothes on or do they? They do keep their clothes oh. on, but they're, they're quite tight fitting clothes. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got a gentleman in the back with showing his muscles and there's yeah. always the one trying to be zany. With his mask. Yeah, like, he probably oh. doesn't have the muscles. I know he has some muscles. Does he? Yeah, yeah, they all have muscles. We all have muscles, Mike. <laughs> Just some of them are some very relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Just some of them are covered with lots of other things. Like clothes. Like fat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Baby loyal. Um. <laughs> Way self esteem. Okay. I don't think any of mine are covered in that. <laughs> but that's all from the buzz this week. Well, thanks, Mike. I, I now know where to go if I need something moving. Coming up, we have a life lesson. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now it's time for this week's... Life Lessons. This week, I thought we'd look at the, the humble paper straw. Pure simple, because in our day, back in the day, we used to get plastic straws that were mm. invincible. Yeah. Which is why we had to get rid of them, because they're bad for the environment. But as famous milkshakes from fast food restaurants, you can't really use them for, can you? No, they go all soggy. They go all soggy. So mm. there's a trick to it, though. So what I've done today is instead of bringing a milkshake, because anyone could do a milkshake, I brought various things you can use a straw to consume. Okay. Okay. So we've got some jelly. Yeah, to, to soak through a straw. Okay. Yeah. We've got a can of fizzy orange drink. Yes. That you could struggle. Other beverages are available. Other beverages are available, yes. <laughs> um, we've got some hundreds and thousands. What's hundreds and thousands? Cute little things. Yeah. Um, we've got some Mentos. Yes, I can and, see them. And a bourbon biscuit. Oh, a bourbon biscuit. Bourbon biscuit. We've also got a bib, because this might get a bit messy. Oh. Okay. Um, so. I'm, I'm loving your optimism that my <laughs> my waddle will fit inside this. <laughs> we can just tuck it in. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to tuck it in. Tuck it in. It's there to, to minimise rather than protect completely. Okay. Oh, so, so it's, it's there just to, to, not to completely protect, just to, to minimise damage. Okay. Okay. So, I think we should start with the jelly. Really? Yes. Let's start with the fun things first. Okay. okay. <laughs> they're all fun. Oh, they're all, they're all fun in different ways. Okay. And you'll find out why as we do this. Right. Which jelly would you like to consume? I'm going to go for the greeny yellow one. The keen lime pie. That's like phlegm. Yes. Um, I'm just going to go for a classic cranberry and raspberry. 
Classic. Yeah. Um, the 10 calorie ones as well, so they're good for me, your diet. Oh. So just peel it back, pop your straw in, and try and suck it through. Just lock, just push it in there, mm -hmm. and then try and suck it through. Mm -hmm. It's difficult, that, isn't it? Reasonably, but I've got a very strong suck. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> got a strong suck. That's why you're popular, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. On left. So <laughs> Riz, it's see-through, Lee. We know you're lying. <laughs> um, so the way to do this is to actually break up the jelly. So give it a bit of a beat about with your straw. Have you heard of this weird thing called a spoon? <laughs> yes, but... You could use a spoon, but you what could. You've got a straw. See, my, my bib's falling off. I'm unprotected. Oh! Uh, oh! My jelly splurged <laughs> out. You splurged out. I thought it's easier to suck. Mmm! Indeed, it is, Mike Benny and Rowe. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, so, so we're saying that's a success then? Straw. That is! I mean, in, in the. You know, occasion when I don't have access to a spoon. Um. <laughs> you could also do what they do with the, the lid. Oh. Which is where you fold the lid in half. Yeah. Yeah. And then curve it round. And it becomes a spoon. <laughs> oh. That's like what monkeys do, isn't it? In, in the wild. <laughs> when they're eating jellies. <laughs> yes. It's quite famous that they're eating jelly in the wild. Yeah. Going, Just need the lid. Just need the lid. Just need the lid. Yeah, see? Yeah, I did it. It was very, yeah, I'm very impressed I by that. I just really like jelly, all right, can't you? Okay, so successful spoon and and straw. Yeah, I'm well impressed Good. by that. Okay. Next one, a bourbon biscuit. How the heck can you eat a bourbon biscuit with a straw? I don't know, Mike. Do you smash it with your fist and then try suck it. the crumbs off? Try it and see what happens. Smash it with, a, with my fist? <laughs> yeah, try and smash a bourbon biscuit with your fist and eat the crumbs. <laughs> Because what, what Lee's forgotten, <laughs> forgotten is a bourbon biscuit is incredibly strong as a biscuit. Yeah, and I'm incredibly weak as <laughs> a human being. Yes. So all you, the way to do this mm -hmm. is to put your finger over the end as you suck. Okay? So you pop it in, and then when you've got... You make contact with the bourbon biscuit and put your finger over, like this. Okay? Then you put your hand. It's difficult. It's See, it's difficult. I didn't I'm, say it I'm, was easy. I'm <laughs> struggling with the concept of how you eat it. Because that's not going to go up the straw, is it? No, it's not going to go up the straw. So you just basically got to... You have to feed it to somebody else to actually eat it. Oh, okay. Is yeah. it one of those, like, fun party games? Sort of thing, yeah. Like suck and blow. Okay. okay. So have a go. See if you can, see if you can suck up a, a bowl of biscuit. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> can you get a crumb up? Because you've crumbed all over the desk. That can do. That you can do. So yeah. if, we, if we crumb it... Oh! Oh, oh <laughs> hello. Mm, that would work. Mm. Mm. What if you, you snort it? You don't want to snort biscuits. Don't want it, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you got that, that, that desire to snort things again, Lee. Don't do that. Do we need Don't to phone a sponsor? No, okay. I'm just thinking, okay. you know, hit the, that, ma that immediate hit of yeah, okay. chocolatey goodness. Okay. Did, did I scare you with how he's laughing? Like, crush I that No, I was slightly turned on. Oh, okay, only slightly. Yeah, that's quite a hard. Tiny though. little bit. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're saying bourbon biscuits is a fail unless you're Yeah, it. that's not good. Right, okay. What about the lovely ice cream topping, hundreds of thousands? Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Have you counted them out to make sure there are actually hundreds and thousands? There are indeed hundreds and thousands, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. And so the trick with this one is just go in the middle and suck Mike, in the middle. why are my hundreds and thousands stuck to the bottom of the bowl? What have you put in there? <laughs> I might have glued some down so you can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Is that what you've done? That's what I've done. I've not used normal glue. I've used food glue. Food glue? Food glue. Is that is that another word for... Yes. Oh. The, the sugar solution that's really... Oh! Good. oh sorry, I thought you meant jizz. All right. Um, <laughs> you always think jizz. Um, so yeah, again, just you can suck these up. Mm. Oh what? It hits the back of your throat. That's not good. Try putting your tongue up before the straw. Mm. 
No. Nope. Yeah, it works. I've got yeah. many of them, but so little taste. Because <laughs> they're cool and sugar. Are we saying that's successful or not? If you want to eat hundreds and thousands with a straw, that's good. Yeah, okay, fine. Now, the last one that we have is a fizzy drink. Yeah. Okay, so open your fizzy drink. You've not shook it up. I've not shaken it up. You can have this one if you want. <laughs> oh, and then, um, the trick with fizzy drinks, I don't know whether people know, but if you turn this round, it stops, it stops the straw from floating away. <laughs> Have I just blown your world? I was this old <laughs> when I discovered that. <gasps> Should I end the show now? <laughs> that is that spoon from lid. <laughs> straw holder. Yes. Now, you know when you brush your teeth in the morning? You have orange juice straight afterwards. When they take them out of the jar, rinse yeah, them give and them put them in. Yeah. yeah. You brush your teeth after you have, or you have orange juice after you brush your teeth. It tastes a bit weird. Yeah, it makes you feel like... Yeah. Well, there's a new trick with Mentos and doing that. Okay. Is there more? <laughs> there is, yeah. So what you do is you pop a Mento in, and then as you drink the orange drink, it doesn't taste the same. No, go on then, happy pop. It's not my first rodeo, this. I know what happens. See? It tastes amazing. Have you, have you got a Mento in your mouth? It's not going to foam up like I've got rabies or anything. Has mine just foamed up like I've got rabies? Yeah, but... See, it didn't foam up like you've got rabies, did well, it? Well, that was disappointing. <laughs> did you want it to foam up like you've got I rabies? I was expecting something more to happen. Crunch the mento. Nothing. Not, <laughs> nothing at all? No. Is it supposed to foam? Yeah. <laughs> take a, a big mouth. Yeah, take the straw out and have a gulp. Do you want me to put more than one like, Mento in? three Mentos and then see what happens. That was my shoes. <laughs> well! <laughs> oh! Wait, 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 wait for that high <laughs> point! Aren't you supposed to put a Minto up your bum? And then drink some fizzy pop? <laughs> I think that's something very different. No. So are we saying you could... So I've blown your mind with that. For that? For, for that. that alone. Okay. Well done. Thank you. For the rest of this shiz, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> <sighs> and like the dog-eared magazines at the bottom of the stack in the dentist waiting room, that brings us to this week's picture of the week, which comes from Betty Humster. It's a good job I don't mind sharing because my girlfriend can't keep her hands off my nips. They do look tasty nips, though. I like to chew on a nip. I, I, like, I like to lick a nip, maybe someone. Mm, mm, mm. Nice. Milky. And don't forget, you can share a picture with us too. Just search for The Cud TV on social media and the TV for our website. And while you're on the website, have a look in the support section for exclusive clips, including outtakes. We really do love receiving your messages, photos and suggestions for the show. Stay safe and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.